Hello. Hello, my name is Gizem. Nice to see you all here. How's everyone? Are you guys all right? Yes, hopefully. All right, uh, hello. Um, so as I said, my name is Gizem. Today we will have our speaking workshop together. Uh, Koshik, you said you're not well. Oh, not bad at all. All right, okay. That's really good, I'm glad. Let me share my screen really quickly. As I've said, we will have our work speaking workshop together today. And our topic is art. Let me share my screen, yes. Hope you can see my screen on full screen, yes. Good, all right. So anytime you want to answer me, you can either use the chat box or you can raise your hand and I will give you permission to speak and we can start. So today we will have some discussion questions on both part one and two and also part three. As you might know, there are three parts in IELTS speaking. So we will have discussion questions on all of them. And at the end of the class, I will, give in, I will be giving you feedback on your uh, speaking, basically. So this will be like a practice for the actual IELTS exam as it is. Now, without further ado, let's start our discussion, first discussion. As I've told you, we will start, sorry, we will have our art speaking workshop, art related speaking workshop. And in this part, in the first part of IELTS exam, you will have a lot of like maybe eight questions and you will need to answer every question with two or three sentences, which will be around like maybe 20 to 40 seconds and you'll be required to answer all of them. So you don't have the option to pass any question in the actual IELTS exam. And our first question for today is, do you like art and why? Who wants to go first? Who wants to speak first? You can raise your hand and I will give you permission to speak. Who wants to go first, answer this question first? Do you like art and why? And let me also share some of the tips that you might use while answering any questions. So basically in IELTS, they don't actually want you to repeat the question. So since here the question asks, do you like art? You can say, for example, I enjoy looking at art or watching art movies or whatever. Uh, as long as you don't use the word actual verb like, you can get a really good point in terms of paraphrasing and vocabulary. Who wants to answer this question? Come on, I know you can do this. All right, Ikra, thank you so much. You can speak. Ikra, can you hear me? You can unmute yourself and speak. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. I love art. No, it's all right. Uh, you might be nervous and it's totally all right. I think we all get nervous since it's not our first language, right? Uh, but I think that was a really good start. The only thing I would add is I would give more details. So for any question, and I'm saying this to all of you, you can give examples. That would be really helpful because they want details. So for example, you can say, I love, for example, Picasso. And that would be a detail. All right. Sandhya, you're next. Art is, it, art is a passion from my childhood itself. Uh, people who want to express their feelings or emotions through art, it is better to uh, convey uh, their emotions. Uh, so, uh, whatever it is, uh, we have to express uh, by tell, telling with our voice more than uh, more than in their art, uh, because uh, it it contains their emotions and their then uh, some uh, we have to say that something we have. Uh, we can't express by our voice, uh, it will express by uh, art. 
All right, I think that was a really good answer. That was around 30 seconds and you've had details, you have explanations and you uh, kind of use a lot of different vocabulary. That was really good. All right, who wants to go next? Who wants to answer this question next? All right, maybe if we move on to another question or a sample answer, you would feel better. So our sample answer for this question is, without a doubt, I can say yes. It's a way to express yourself, and I always admire how versatile it can be. It opens new doors for me. So as you can see, to get good pay, uh, grades in vocabulary it, for this answer, uh, this person used the word, our sample answer used the word versatile. And using words that are really uncommon, and they have like really synonyms, good synonyms of other uh, vocabulary. Oops. My light just, yeah. All right, uh, sorry, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so using different words actually make you gain points in terms of lexical resources. So giving details and using different vocabulary would actually help you with your grade overall. Someone unmuted themselves. Do you have anything to say? Or was that by mistake? All right, maybe that was by mistake. So let's move on to our second question. Our second question is, do you think children can benefit from going to art galleries? Who wants to answer this question first? You can raise your hand and I will give you permission to speak. Who wants to answer this question? Or would you like to see the example answer first? All right, let's see the sample answer. So definitely children can be triggered by seeing artworks and it can contribute to abstract thinking, which can be beneficial in their adult life. I want to remind you that these are all like maybe band eight or nine answers. So you don't have to always use these different words or different grammar structures. Of course, using them would be better. They would result in a higher band score, but the important thing right now is to be able to answer a question in any way you can, basically. So, do you think children can benefit from going to art galleries? Yes, Ikra, thank you. You can answer the question. Should get benefit from going to art galleries? Like, uh, for example, uh, when they go to uh, a gallery, so they can get an idea. If someone is uh, uh, interested in art, so that uh, they can get ideas from there. And uh, yes, so. All right, I think that was really good because you gave examples and details and explanations. Uh, I think that was really good, better than your first answer. Thank you so much. Yes, Andrea, go ahead. Art helps to improve our creativity and problem solving skills. So it is um, uh, children uh, will helpful to give uh, more creative by viewing that, and uh, they would think think about the what is uh, happening in that art. What is uh, what what creative thinking uh, create is done in that art. Uh, the children will think. Because yeah, um, for that purpose, uh, it will helps to uh, um, children become more productive. All right, thank you so much. That was again really good. All right, who wants to go next? Who wants to answer this question next? Ansa, Koshik, Ans. Yes, Ansa. Thank you. Go ahead. Um. Yes, of course, I think children uh, can get uh, useful information uh, while visiting these type of galleries. Um, in, uh, in addition to learning their, uh, from their uh, regular curriculum, which they uh, learn in the school. So the, the art galleries exhibit totally different kind of uh, uh, information uh, in the um, uh, specific environment and children can learn from that. All right, thank you so much. Really good. Is there anyone else who wants to answer this question? Yes, Smith Daisy. 
learning arts in young age can all can always be advantageous for children it helps them in cognitive development and it helps them to think out of the box and increase their creativity all right maybe add one or two sentences because uh, you should have around maybe 20 to 40 second answer but i think that was good maybe just one or two sentences would be better and that said i think think out of the box was a really good addition to your answer because thinking out of the box is a really natural like native like uh, vocabulary uh, i really liked that one all right who wants to speak next all right maybe we can move on to another slide and talk about some well-known paintings which might give you ideas on what to say or how to talk about art so as you might know this is a painting of van gogh and van gogh's paintings of sunflowers are among his most famous paintings and he did them in arles in the south of france in 1888 and in 1889 Winston painted a total of five large canvases with sunflowers in a vase and with different three different shades of yellow and nothing else basically. And in this way, he demonstrated that it was possible to create an image with numerous variations of a single single color without any loss of eloquence. The sunflower paintings had a special significance for Van Gogh. They communicated gratitude, he wrote. He hung the first two in the room of his friend, the painter Paul Gauguin, I don't know how to pronounce it, sorry, who came to live with him for a while in the yellow house. Gauguin was impressed by the sunflowers, which he thought were completely Vincent. And this is actually one of my favorite paintings of all time. I love Van Gogh and this painting a lot. Do you guys like it too? I think it's a really good painting. All right, so what we wanted to show here is that you can talk about a painting and describe a painting in different ways using different vocabularies and grammar structures, right? So, for example, here we learned the word canvases, or we learned that there are three shades of yellow in this painting, and we can talk about the shades or colors of uh, any paint and what it means for us or the painter itself so there are a lot of different ways to talk about art and these are some of the vocabularies we can use while doing that so if I were you if there were any words that I don't know I would take notes of them and maybe try to use them in my answers in the later discussion parts I think someone said hello do you have anything to say Ikra? I have a question. Uh, what sure. is the meaning of elo eloquence? Loss of eloquence? Mm -hmm. So basically it means that um, maybe, how to say this? So it's like a, let me think about that. Let me have how to explain this. Um, so maybe it's like the, that fanciness kind of, that rhythm between the colors, if that makes sense. It's something like that. So it's like a positive thing while we're describing art, basically. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sorry about that. I. Uh, it's really hard for me to explain the meanings of the words because I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I would definitely take note of that word if I didn't know it. All right. Any other questions? All right. Then let's talk about... Sorry, I couldn't hear you. I said it's sorry. Oh, all right. Okay. Thank you. Uh, your voice com comes like a little bit less than the others. I sometimes uh, find it hard to uh, hear what you're saying, but it's all right. If I focus, I can understand. It's all right. Okay. So let's talk about another well-known painting. So this is Underworld's Campbell Soup Cans. And these are perhaps the most well-known images of the American modern art. Initially, it Created as a series of 32 canvases in 1962, the soup cans gained international acclaim as a breakthrough in pop art. And each soap in this painting can correspond to a different flavor and resemble the actual image of the red and white Campbell's soup cans. 
This juxtaposition between pure replication and the artist's hand makes the series all the more intriguing. So juxtaposition basically means that we're putting two different like opposite things in the same image or thing like in a piece of writing. Juxtaposition means that two different things, two opposites come together in something. And this is actually a really good example of that. Any questions about any of these or how to explain paintings and which words to use maybe or any words that you don't know and I will try to explain them as much as I can. All right, if not, let's move on to our discussion section two. So in the second part of IELTS exam, you will have one minute to prepare an answer and two minutes to speak. And the examiner will actually give you a question card and then, <coughs> I'm sorry. And then they will give you also a pen and a paper and you will read the question and prepare for the question for one minute and you will be asked to speak for two whole minutes without interruptions. So let's talk about some vocabulary that we can use in this section. So for example, we can use the word masterpiece. Do you know what it means? Can you write that to me in the, on the chat box? The word masterpiece? Yes, so a masterpiece is basically um, someone's like art. So for example, we can say the sunflower painting can be the masterpiece of Wen Ga, for example. What about admiration? Do you know what admiration means? And this is the noun form of admire. Do you know what it means? You can use the chat box to answer me. So to admire something means that we love it so much. So yes, admiration means to be impressed with something so much. Impressive is actually a, an adjective and admiration is a noun and to admire is a verb. So we can use all these um, different forms of words uh, in different sentences for example, right? So for example, we can say, I admire this painting, or it is really impressive, and they all necessarily mean the same thing, like more or less the same thing, which would mean that we're paraphrasing, using the synonyms of a word that we know, which would actually make us gain points. So instead of repeating the same words, we want to try to use the synonyms of the words that we know, which would, as I've said, uh, make us gain scores, like really good scores in lexical resources criteria. What do you think the cultivate means? To cultivate here. To cultivate, yes, to develop, to actually do something, to make something actually. To cultivate something, to develop something, to make something, yes. What is extraordinary? It's an adjective extraordinary so it's really good like almost perfect it's extraordinary we cannot believe how good it is extraordinary means that so it's really really good yes remarkable remarkable is a really good synonym of extraordinary actually what about minimalism or minimalists people who are who are minimalists uh, like minimalism for example if i wanted to use it in a sentence minimalism so basically when something is not really complicated there are minimal elements in that yes it's a form of style um so it's minimalist it's simple yes so its style is really simple and it's minimalist we say what about prestigious prestigious so prestigious is an adjective and it's it kind of means like uh yes it's inspiring it's unique it's reputed yes it has a reputation for being really like um unique and inspiring and really good 
So people kind of admire these people or these works of art. What about visual arts? Visual arts. So whenever we see the word visual, we should think of the word eye, things that we can see or uh, things that we can watch maybe or look at. Visual means that, and visual arts means, yes, it's creative art, it's art that, mm, are, that are created and that we can look at or watch. Yes, yeah, so visual art means that. What about mesmerize, to mesmerize? mesmerize it's a verb uh, mesmerizing means beautiful yes so mesmerizing is the adjective form of to mesmerize and to mesmerize basically means that uh, like for example when i look at a painting of van gogh i can be mesmerized so i'm really uh, influenced by it it's really impressive so i really like it mesmerize means that yes all right now let's look at our discussion question together and i will give you one minute to prepare your answers and then you will have two minutes to speak raising your hands all right so our question for today is describe a piece of art you like and you should say what it is, when you first saw it, what do you know about it, and explain why you like it. I will start your one minute preparation time right now, and then after one more minute preparation time ends, I will give each of you two minutes to speak. Your time starts now. All right, so time's up. Who wants to speak first? You can raise your hand and I will give you permission to speak. The question is to describe a piece of art you like. And you can use the words on the screen or the words that you've taken notes of before. Who wants to speak first? All right. Would you like to see the sample answer first? Maybe that could give you some ideas. Oh, all right. Yes, really good. Sandia, go ahead. Art is a creative. I would uh, I would talk about uh, most famous art that is of Leonardo da Vinci. That is Mona Lisa. It's a masterpiece of him. Whereas. Uh, in the extraordinary paint of, in the painting of a smiling woman, painted by the greatest artist. The woman uh, in the painting is known as Lisa. It's a, it, uh, I think it's an Italian woman. Uh, this fact, uh, the uh, past, uh, the mesmerizing view of that woman, uh, the woman uh, is very impressive to uh, view. Uh, Mona Lisa, uh, he, uh, I think Mona Lisa um, is located in a lower museum in the city of Paris. Right. Uh, if I if I had a if I I have a um, I have have any chance to go there, I would uh, I would like to definitely see a see the experience 
नेकड आई right is that all yeah i didn't want to cut your this piece so that i was worried uh, okay so that was a bit short it was actually one minute maybe 10 ish seconds and you've had a lot of pauses in between so i'm afraid that won't be enough in the actual ielts exam but since this is the practice section i think it's really good um in terms of your detailing so you know you obviously know what you're talking about um, but still, even if you haven't seen the artwork in person or um, like there are limited things that you know about it, uh, I'm afraid I still want you to speak about it for two minutes. So what you can do if you don't know anything to say is that you can talk about how impressive it is and how, effect, how it affects your life and why you like it so much. So for example, you could say, I like this painting because it really talks about how women are portrayed in those uh, centuries or years or whatever. Or you can say, uh, for example, it shows women empowerment, like whatever you want to say. Uh, basically, even if you're lying, you need to speak for two minutes. So don't be afraid to lie. I'm saying this to all of you. Uh, since these questions talk about you and ask about you, there are no wrongs, basically. Of course, other than saying this painting is from that other person, which would be a lie, obviously. But uh, as long as it's really personal, you can say anything you want, basically. All right, Kuba, go ahead. Um, to be honest, okay. I'm not fond of uh, arts. Let me start your time here, then can you start again? <laughs> All right. Uh, to be honest, I'm not fond of arts and I've never been to arts gallery. But uh, today I, wanted, I want to talk about one art that my friend, uh, it, it kind of, it's the kind of a sketch that my friend created. Uh, actually, it is a cartoon character sketch, which uh, the cartoon used to come like two or three years ago, and he created uh, a character, a sketch of the character of the cartoon. And basically, it is uh, the character, uh, it is a second lead hero of the cartoon, and he created that character. But uh, uh, it is a remarkable art, and he is quite good in uh, picturing them as a realistic art, but uh, uh, that's it. All right. I'm afraid that was also really short. It was 50 seconds. And they want you to speak for all of you to speak for at least one and a half minutes. So even if your answer will be shorter than two minutes, it should be longer, still longer than one and a half minutes. But of course, since this is the practice session, it's all right. Um, what I would do if I were you guys, I would try to time myself answering uh, different questions that I find online. There are a lot of questions online. And there are also uh, the speaking sessions that we have had before on YouTube, on our YouTube channel. What I would do is I would, again, uh, find this discussion session in that part, in those videos, and I would like stop the video, I would time myself, answer the question, and then move on to watching the others. And also what you can do is to find things to talk about is you can ask yourself, how is this important or why is this important for me? And when is this important for me? For example, when we're thinking of art, we kind of tend to think about paintings, right? But actually movies are also art. Also, poetry is also art, like novels are art. So if you don't know anything to talk about, uh, like in terms of paintings, you can, of course, talk about music, for example, which would be a perfect way of talking about art because music is also art. Like you can think outside of the box, thinking different, then maybe you can find things to talk about, I think. Sandhya, if there's a speaking test for you on Monday morning, what I would do if I were you is I would try to practice with those questions that I don't really like. So for example, 
if I don't like, for example, I don't like talking about sports because I don't know anything about sports. And what I would do if I were you, I would try to find questions on sports and practice on them. Because if I can find things to talk about on sports, I will be able to talk about other things. So for example, I, another hard thing for me is, what, let's say, technology. I'm not really good at it. I don't know most of the things about it. Uh, for example, I'm saying just things. And I would just talk about technology for a few minutes. Try to do that. And I think you will be fine, hopefully. So focus on the subjects that you don't really like and don't know anything about. And for the others, you'll be able to fill the two minutes, uh, I think, speaking time. No worries. Any other questions or any other answers to this question? Of course, I will pray for you, Sanda. Okay, hope everything goes well. Yes, Ikra, go ahead. This topic is very difficult for me to talk about this topic because uh, I don't know about that in art, but I will try my best. Um, art, uh, the masterpiece that I saw uh, was uh, very beautiful, and I saw it and at my university, and um, I saw it uh, before a week. A week ago, I saw it, and it really uh, admired me. Like uh, it was very beautiful and like it was extraordinary and uh, it was uh, it was uh, cultivated by our uh, student uh, university students like our students and um, like it was very different and uh, I I I don't uh, I don't have interest in paintings but when I saw that painting. Uh, so I it really um, get my interest in painting, and uh, now I want to learn painting and art. That's all. All right, I think you were doing a really good job. By the way, that was one minute six six seconds, but I think you were talking about something that didn't happen. Probably, am I correct? I think so. That's what. That's what I thought, but um, you gave a really good background of something that you uh, don't really care about. So you don't really care about art, you don't understand art, but you gave a really good background of that. And I think that was really beautiful. Uh, you can do this on the actual exam too, but also you should still talk, talk about the art part and why you like it. and. Uh, maybe the things that caught your attention would be really good. Uh, so for example, you said there was just one thing that you really, uh, that really got your in interest. What I would do is I would try to describe it a bit. So for example, you could say, oh, there were flowers in this painting and I really liked it because I love real flowers. And what else? Like I always keep flowers at home, so that's why this painting reminded me of home. Like blah blah blah. Whatever comes to your mind. I think that you were doing really well, and if you kind of described that art to us, that would actually really get a good grade because it would have enough detail. Um, all right. So Kashik says on the chat box, it's not really difficult, but you're feeling shy. That's, of course, understandable. I think we all feel shy talking about something in a language uh, that is not our first language and talking about something that we don't really like, like art. I love art, but still. Um, and of course, there are next sessions, other sessions that you can practice speaking. And of course, you, you can do it on yourself, too. Uh, all right. What was I going to say? Oh. Also, Ikra, you've had some grammar mistakes while talking. So, for example, instead of saying got my interest, you can say, for example, caught my eye, which would be a really good way of increasing your vocabulary, uh, vocabulary score. Uh, you can say caught my eye or caught my interest would be better. But of course, these are understandable. English is none of our first language. And yeah, 
overall, I think you were doing really well, by the way, if you gave more details. All right, any others? Any others? Okay, let's read the sample answer then. Maybe you'll get some ideas. So a piece of art that I particularly like is a genius painting by the world famous artist Pablo Picasso and the artwork label is Guernica. I saw it for the first time when I decided to do a puzzle 10 years ago, but I wasn't quite sure how to completely understand and enjoy art at the time. Then when I started talking taking the Spanish language course, and I began to understand a bit about the history of Spain in the meantime, the iconic painting began to provide me with a much clearer image. The artwork is more about the city of Guernica, which was attacked by the Nazi German aircraft during the Spanish Civil War of 1937. In essence, Art has become a very popular emblem of the anti-war condemnation by presenting the atrocities and hardships of war in a perfect way. In reality, Guernica is regarded to be among the masterpieces of Spain. Other than depicting a very historic incident so beautifully, what I particularly enjoy about this artwork is that it is full of many metaphors. Yet, its main subject, which is about the hardships of both people and animals, has been portrayed very brilliantly. Other than that, the sheer scale of the painting, which is about 11 feet tall and 25 feet wide, can leave you feeling like it curls, curls around you as though you are in great by in real life. The mastery of a perfect color combination, where a contrasting color of black and white has been used on the surface of the painting to make it something. It's not readable there, uh, more, more intense and dramatically. This was a surreal moment in my life. Sorry about that. Okay, so this was our sample answer. And it's good because it has, as I've said, different vocabulary like world famous artwork masterpiece metaphors in essence so in essence basically means that like the uh, in itself basically and it has different grammar subjects but of course none of us can do this good at this point because uh, we're also talking while sorry thinking while we're talking and it's kind of hard to get this level of like English and different grammars and vocabularies. So don't worry about uh, really getting an answer like this one, uh, but worry about right now, worry about talking for one and a half minutes at least and talking about something in detail. That should be your primary focus at this point. All right, anyone who wants to answer this question? Or should I move on to another slide? All right, maybe next question then. All right, this is a famous painting that we've talked about, like the painting in the sample answer. And now let's talk about the third part of JL's speaking exam. In this part, you will again have some questions, like maybe four, four or five questions related to the second question. So the part in the second question. And in this part, in this practiced part, you will have to choose one question and answer it at length. So part three in IELTS exam wants you to speak for maybe around one minute for each question. So a bit more detailed than the first part. And our questions for today is, why do you think some people enjoy looking at paintings and sculptures and others don't? And the second question is, what makes a good painting? Now, you can raise your hand and answer one of these questions, and I will again time you. Yes, Ikra, go ahead. I want to answer the first part of the question. I guess that uh, it's uh, the people choices that uh, who uh, enjoys looking at paintings and sculpture. Sorry, and, like it depends on everyone's choice that uh, who like or interest in uh, paintings. 
so they enjoying and uh, others that uh, who do who who are not uh, interested so they don't, don't enjoy looking in uh, painting all right that was a bit short again like 25 seconds what you can do is you can give examples like saying for example you can even say for example i love looking at paintings and sculptures but my sister or my twin sister, you can lie, uh, hates art. And whenever we go to an art museum, uh, she is always really bored and she wants to leave, but I always want to take my time and look at these beautiful paintings and whatever. So whenever you cannot think about anything to say, just give an example. Just say, oh, this happened to me, or this is what I like, or this is what my sister hates, or whatever. Just any of you, I'm saying this to any of you, all of you, whenever you can't find anything to say, just give an example from your own, not, own life, even if it's a lie. All right, Sandhya, go ahead. I think some people, uh, my don't think that uh, art is important because they hesitate uh, or <laughs> they have lost their hesitation to be creative or, or they don't like uh to think what is the what is in in that art some uh, other people uh, uh, uh will enjoy uh, looking at painting because uh how emotionally we get to go uh, some certain works uh, and uh, they they have to think uh, the about the artist feelings and emotions on that paint all right I think that's all right. Okay, so that was again a bit short, 34 seconds, but still it was good. Uh, you had some uh, details as to why you're saying these things, but it was, I'm afraid, a bit short. Uh, as I've said, you can, what you can do is you can practice for those questions that you don't really like and maybe try to come up with some lies basically uh, that will get you that uh, time limit get, that will get you to that time limit I think that would help you uh, because other than that I think you're doing a really good job in terms of like using accurate grammar and trying to use different vocabulary all right Smith Daisy to be honest, uh, some people enjoy art because they love it. They have keen interest in art. Just like my mom, whenever we visit a museum, she is always like looking at pictures and painting, although she has seen it many times. But for me, it's quite boring. I will always in a hurry to get out of there. So it's about your interest. All right, I think that was it. That was, again, I'm afraid, a bit short, uh, 23 seconds-ish. And But I think you had good detailing. What you can do, uh, like contrary to others, you can talk about the like um, general side of it. So you, you've given me enough detail about your mom and you. You could talk about the general side of it, saying that. So that's how it is. Some people just don't enjoy looking at uh, different paintings uh, for hours and trying to understand things from it. We would, some people just would r rather uh, watch movies maybe or talk to people. And what I wanna say is you could talk about the general part of it, the generalizations. Others were lacking in giving examples you were kind of lacking in giving general ideas. But other than that, I think you had uh, a really good details, detailing in terms of your answer. Uh, and you also, again, used, I think, a really good uh, phrasal verb, be in a hurry. I think that was really good addition there because it shows you're consistent in terms of uh, your vocabulary usage, basically. All right, Kubaib, go ahead. Hmm. I think some people like arts because it basically gives them an idea. It uh, basically it gives an idea about the culture of the painting, and it conveys the situation of the author, and they get emotionally emotionally attached to that painting. 
and for example like my sister like art and he watches a lot of youtube videos how to create a new uh, how to create a scenery for example if he he is creating a scenery to so he use he watches a lot of videos how to make a good painting and how to perfect it and whereas i don't like art that much i find it a bit boring and time wasting process and so i don't like art that's the reason why some people don't like art because they find it boring and time wasting or time consuming they rather prefer to do anything else rather than watching art all right that was really really good it was exactly 1 minute by the way and you had both details and examples and also general uh, answer to the question because the question doesn't talk about ask about only us right it talks about it asks about people in general and you've uh, managed to talk about both of them uh, in that specific time limit using different grammar structures and uh, different vocabularies saying like convey or emotionally attached and also using different grammar structures like how to which was really nice because it's a use of noun clause and yeah i think that was a really good answer so yeah i think that was really really good thank you so much okay is there anyone else who wants to answer this question maybe not all right so let's quickly talk about idioms and phrasal verb and collocations so whenever you're talking about something that you don't really like you can say it's not my cup of tea so for example you can say thanks for inviting me but ballet isn't really my cup of tea so i don't really like ballet that much so whenever you're saying you want to say you don't like something that much you can say something is not my cup of tea and you cannot use this uh, saying like it is my cup of tea it's actually a negative thing to say so you cannot uh, use it in the positive sense so just say something is not my cup of tea and you'll be using an idiom and i think it's a really easy idiom to use in the IELTS exam because usually the questions ask us, ask us to talk about things that we like and don't like. So I think this is a really useful idiom. And the second one is food for the, for the soul. So we can use this if something is food for the soul, it means that it promotes feelings and emotions. So it can uplift our mood or make us happy or it can make us feel like really bad and empty or whatever. So when we're talking about how something makes us feel, we can say it's a food for the soul. So we can say music is the food for my soul. So I really like music because it makes me feel emotions. When we want to say that, we can say it is food for the soul, basically. All right. Now, if you've taken notes of these, thank you for joining our class. What you want to do next, what I want you to do next is to practice as much as you can. Uh, and I will be giving you feedbacks right now. Uh, so what I mean by practice is, for this class at least, is I think most of you have the problem to uh, talk at length. So what you can do to, it's like, be better at this is you can basically take your phone, put a timer and time yourself while speaking and try to talk for the required amount. That would help you a lot and try to feel like understand how that two minutes, for example, uh, feels like. So when you practice like that, you will eventually understand how much you can say in two minutes and then you'll be able to stop even without looking at the timer and you will understand that yeah okay two minutes is up i think the first thing that i want to say is that and the second thing is i think you should also think how to give details uh, so for example while we're explaining like answering any question in ielts they basically want us to uh like give details maybe how to rephrase this um maybe explain to the other person our point of view 
So they want you to talk in detail and give examples like details. What you can do is you can practice lying basically. You can try to uh, find things to talk about even if you hate the subject or you don't know anything about the subject. You should be able to talk, talk about things because if you pause or if you repeat yourself or if you talk too generally or too detailed, they will actually result in lower scores. So I would focus on those questions that I don't really like and are not interested in. And I would try to find things to say even for those questions. The next thing I would do, and I'm again saying this to all of you, is I would try to practice uh, speaking without posing. And I know this is a bit hard. What you can do instead of posing is giving like really uh, natural things, like saying really natural things. So for example, when I'm speaking and, and I want to think about something, I always say, um, well, and that actually gains me some time, right? I can say, well, it depends on this. And while well, I'm saying, well, it depends on something, I'm actually thinking on the back of my mind uh, on what to say, right? So you can like buy time by using these fillers, saying, well, or it depends on, or maybe saying like, hmm, I've never really thought about that. Or saying, oh, that's a really good question, or that's a really interesting question. So whenever you're thinking, you should always feel that silence with something instead of saying um or uh every time you should fill that gap with actual words if that makes sense and that's a common problem with the answers that i've had today uh other than that some of you tend to repeat what you say so for example saying I like art or I like this painting or I don't like this painting all over again actually don't make us gain points. What you can do instead is you can paraphrase the sentence which would at least show the examiner that you know different words. So for example, if you said I like this painting before and you want to repeat that again because you don't know anything else to say, you can say in other words, I enjoy looking at this art which would show that you can say different things instead of like, and you also know different grammar structures saying, I enjoy looking, which would be using gerunds, right? Uh, if you know uh, gerunds in the grammar. Uh, yeah, actually that would help you with your score too, overall score. Uh, I've said two short repetition pauses, and also some of you had like singular plural mistakes, uh, one of those is Ikra, you said, for example, it depends on, instead of saying it depends on. And these mistakes don't actually like make you make them reduce really a lot of points if you don't do it often. So if you make singular and plural mistakes often, that will actually result in loss of points. But other than that, if you make just one or two of those mistakes, they won't actually matter that much. So consistency is important. Um, other than that, um, some of you have had really good use of vocabulary, like paraphrasing and synonyms. I think most of you did this. Some of those that caught my attention was think outside the box and be in a hurry, emotionally attached. I think those were really context specific and really good. So when you're like, practicing for the exam, what I would do if I were you, I would take notes of those context specific vocabulary, like saying how to like something or saying, talking about something that you like or don't like, or those re words related to art, like canvases, for example, or juxtaposition, for example. And I would try to use them in my answers. And as you practice using those words, uh, you will actually be able to say them without even looking at the paper. And this, this was the general feedback. And I've talked about everything that I wanted to say, I think. Oh, yes. And also, 
learn the pronunciation, how to pronounce uh, those words that you use frequently and the words that you just learned. So for example, if you didn't know the word practice and you just learned it, also practice like pronouncing the word practice, if that makes sense, uh, because pronunciation is also really, really important and it makes, it helps the examiner understand you. So if they don't understand you, they won't be able to grade you. So learning the pronunciation of the words that we use, that we frequently use, would actually help us a lot. And normally I would give you like band scores, but today uh, I think only one answer was uh, in the time limit that we've established. And that was the last answer that we ever got. So I would feel not so good about giving you guys a band score, although I already did, but I kind of don't want to say them because they are, not really good because you guys didn't talk for the required amount of time, uh, required period. So that would actually result in really low scores. But if you are curious, I can of course tell you. And thanks for joining, by the way. And uh, without you go, sorry, before you go, by the way, I'm sending you a survey form. Those of you who haven't filled that survey form up before, I would really appreciate it if you filled the survey form up. Uh, but those of you who've already done it before, don't have to do it again because it's the same. Uh, all right, thank you for joining. Hope you filled the survey form up. And if you want to ask me any questions, you can use the chat box or just unmute yourself and ask me any questions. All right, if there are no questions, thank you for joining. And I hope all of you have really good practice sessions and exams. I would really be happy to hear back from you if you ever take the exam. And I would be really happy if you filled the survey form up. Nice to see you, bye.